Today's video, I'm going to talk about in early recovery, you're going to have a explosion of emotion. All right. It's going to be like a volcano at times. I have spoken with some of the most burly, manly men, and they tell me, Ryan, I don't know what the hell's going on, but I can't stop crying. I'm crying at commercials. I feel like a little girl. And, you know, you have to uh, make light of a lot of the situations that you're going to be dealing with. And this is one of them. You've numbed yourself for so long that when the numbness starts to go away and you actually start to feel again, accept it. Um, I'm still, I think, grateful for the fact that I have emotions. I mean, I'm a very, very emotional guy. Um, my family makes fun of me all the time. I mean, it, my kids, baptisms, um, you name it. There's plenty of video footage of me t welling up crying um, in key parts of my, my life. Um, and that's okay. <clears throat> There's going to be times in your early recovery where you're going to feel again. And, you know, don't let it bother you. It's completely normal to, uh, to cry a little bit. To, to, feel, to have some emotion, to have some regrets, to have uh, some things that will, you know, bring out some raw feelings. And that's okay, all right? You know, embrace it and be happy that you actually aren't numb, okay? And the reason I'm talking about this is because the email I got today hits on this. And I actually read this about five minutes ago, and I had to wait till uh, the tears in my eyes weren't so obvious, because, I don't know, a lot of what he wrote, I can relate to, um, so here it goes, he said, you can use my name, my name is Chad, I'm 26 years old, and I'm a recovering drug addict, before I ever tried anything, anything mind-altering, I would see people at parties doing things, and it would make me wonder. I wanted to know what was going on in their minds, how they thought and felt while doing these things, drugs and alcohol. Then I got a taste for it myself, and it was game on. I remember taking Vicodin for the first time and thinking, this is definitely what I want to do for the rest of my life. But of course, that was before I had lived the life of addiction and dependency. Like so many, my story moves from Vicodin to Oxy to heroin with some methadone and subutex in between over a span of about six years. I'm only about 10 days clean now, which is an amazing feat because for the last three years, I never made it past day three. I'm a big guy. I'm 6'3", 225 pounds, and sometimes I sit and cry like a baby, thinking about all the terrible things I've done to myself and my family. Taking opiates out of my life has left a huge crater in me. And I'm trying to fill it with love. Over the last week, I've spent more time. Sorry. I've spent more time with my family than I have in years. They don't mind me grabbing a hold of them and sobbing until I can't anymore. They don't mind me being on edge and short tempered because I feel so terrible. They see me for who I want to be. During my active addiction, on the surface, I wouldn't bat an eye to tell lies and manipulate the people I love. But deep down, I never wanted to be that way. But I was trapped and felt like I had no other choice. The other night, I was having a breakdown, and I was saying to my father, quotes, How can I ever repay the things I have taken and done? How can I ever make it right? And he told me something that I and every addict needs to hear. He said, quote, The best way to repay the things you've done is to stay clean and live a happy life. Because that's what we want. We all want for you and it's what you deserve, end quote. I'm not sure I would still be here if it wasn't for my father. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, and once you take that step, you can't turn back. <clears throat> it's important for us addicts to believe in a last time, and surely I do. Ten days ago, I took my last hit of all last hits, and I'm going to keep it that way. I'm sorry if I rambled. I'm still not feeling well. But it's getting better. Thanks, Ryan. Chaz. Now, <clears throat> the reason this sits over for me, uh, my dad played a huge part in my recovery. 
<clears throat> as well as other family members, but I actually remember like a very similar conversation between my father and I. So that's why it hit home for me. And that's why we do these videos, okay? Is because, and the stories are important because so many of us have so many things that are relatable. And I got six and a half years. And this brings me right back. And it makes me grateful for um, for all you guys. All right. So uh, if you'd like to share your story, you can email me at ryanacompsport.com. In the subject line, put YouTube story and my story. Um, let me know if you want to use your first or last name. Um, and uh, leave some comments. All right. You guys have a good one.